shave today and a little talk. It's Friday, April 12th. This is close to the weekend where we close out here in America on the day we all celebrate as uh, the money that we donate to our government to give give away to the people that decide they just want to come walking in here across uh, the southern border uh, and to uh, increase the wealth of those who uh, uh, rule us. And that's the way it was. Anyhow, uh, today I'm going to uh, do a third part in, I'm going to call it a series. My previous two videos had been about learning to to use a straight razor, <clears throat> in which I have not used a straight razor. I've been uh, demonstrating a method by which people who may be interested in learning the shave with an open blade can use uh, without uh, uh, going all in uh, and uh, uh, buying all this stuff because there are going to be some people who just do not want to do those things that many of us enjoy about straight razor shaving. I've heard uh, the, the biggest comment that I've heard about why people stop is because they wanted to shave easier without all the honing and the stropping. I get that. Okay, uh, for me, it's part of it. It's part of the enjoyment. Soap I'm going to use today is Mitchell's Wolf Fat, uh, uh, where I learned some of the principles that I practice, which if go back to the first video and those principles, if you are following along, those principles are slick soap, sharp steel, uh, lowest angle, lightest tar touch, and stretch the skin. Those are the big principles in you, in any type of traditional shaver, shaving. Uh, and it actually, in modern shaving, using a car, you could you could apply some of those principles in cartridges and even electric razors. Okay, so so I'm saying that, but uh, uh, it'll it would I'll leave you present anyhow. Uh, where I learned some of this, Mitchell's wool fat was a favorite on Fridays. They used to call it Fat Friday. Okay, I'm using the cheap board brush from uh, Omega. Uh, And I went ahead and puffed up the lather ahead of time. Took me a long time to before I finally bought some Mitchell's Wolf Fat because uh, there were so many people that had problems with it. And, you know, it's like, I mean, it's kind of too late now. The uh, uh, formula has changed a little bit. So I think this is the original one. Uh, and same thing with, with uh, William's Soap, okay? Uh, it was a a mainstay for a long, long, long time, and it was the economy method, okay? Uh, one thing I kind of notice about this soap is being different from what I usually use. I'm a big Sterling fan, and I use, most, most of the time I use Sterling soaps, although I do use other stuff. It's just that I have the most of Sterling soaps, and uh, thereby I recommend uh, that people use them. Uh, so uh, the thing that I find about this is that it seems to be a lighter lather. It seems to be able to, for me, be able to generate a more foam-like uh, consistency, lighter. Uh, once you get it and you start getting it whipped up and smoothed out, that's, that's what I find. So the tools that I am going to use today, uh, okay, let me see. Okay, the first tool I'm going to use, okay, is going to be the Feather DX, okay, and uh, I'm, I'm using this uh, kind of as a, uh, uh, a follow-up kind of a tie-in to, and if you have not gone to uh, Martin Woods, uh, I think he calls his channel uh, Martin Shave Tests or something like that. But Martin got a really, really, really cool and and his video. I don't know if he's made another one since that one where he used his. His is a custom, so it's a custom engraved. I don't know if it had the original. I didn't buy the wood type scales. I don't know if he had that rescaled and it is a natural wood. But he had this guy in Japan, okay, and you could you could look and you could see a sh video short uh, on YouTube, uh, Zen Razor Japan. Make sure you say Japan in there or you'll go somewhere else. 
Okay. And there's a short in there where he is actually, and, and, and the, the photography on that is really, really beautiful. He's actually showing where he's in there and he's got a tool, um, uh, and he is actually doing the hand engraving of the initialing and the scroll work and all that he put in there. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. And make sure you check out, uh, I don't, I don't believe Martin uh, demoed that, but when you go to there, make sure you check out the spine engraving that he did on beautiful, beautiful stuff. It's a one-off, unique piece that, that anybody would be proud to have, in, in, in my opinion. So uh, I had thought that when Martin had taken up uh, this type of tool, he, he was using the uh, model of the Feather Artist Club uh, that is called the SS, okay, which has, has like, uh, if you were look at, at the profile, it, it doesn't have, you know, a, a slightly uh, concave, it has a little bubble at the end there that the design of it is supposed to kind of pull and stretch your skin. And I've never shaved with one, so I can't comment on it. I bought this because I had heard, read where some people did not like that. Okay, and they preferred this. So that was my basis for that. And I thought that he was using uh, the standard feather professional blades, okay, uh, which is the, the, the their standard blade, okay. And I have always, you know, I try, I've tried them all. I have Kai blades. I have uh, uh, Schick Pro line. I have all, the, all of those, okay. I've tried them all uh, or, you know, I shouldn't say I tried them all. I think there's some coming out of Korea I haven't tried, and I think there's some coming out of China that I have not tried. But uh, uh, largely, I came across in what I, and this is, I think, the one that Martin bought the big, big box of, which is a Feather Professional Super. Okay, the difference between the Super and the Standard is that the Super is actually thicker. They do call out the thickness. I think this is 0.28 millimeters thick uh, uh but it's not quite as thick this is the thickest one and this and it might not sound like much but this the height of this is two tenths of a millimeter higher so it protrudes a little bit further uh from the tool you use and it protrudes a little bit more and um i personally think that that they provide the least resistance in the feel of the hand when you're shaving. Uh, that's my opinion, okay? Uh, and But I also have another opinion. I don't think they last as long. I think I think these, the regular professional, uh, feather professionals last a little bit longer. And certainly my other go kind of go-to is the, uh, what is called the Feather Pro Guard, okay? So this blade is actually a little bit thinner uh, and it has a unique, type of a guard type thing. And I'll, uh, you know, I've showed this on other, uh, other videos. Uh, whereas, okay. What happens is you could kind of see the little, the little ridges on there. Okay. But you could also see the plate that's kind of laminated on around there. So it's a plate that has, I guess the die cuts out of it and somehow they form it and press it on and bond it around here so that the part where what you see is like a teeth uh, wraps around the edge so, so that the actual edge is, is not really in contact with your skin. I think, I think it gets, I, you know, because you can see, so for whatever thickness, okay, it might be a couple of thou, it, it is providing a, a little bit of a cushion along there. Now, I had said, uh, in one of my videos that, that, you know, maybe for somebody starting off, I don't recommend this. And there's a reason being for that. Uh, okay. And uh, you take this out and I did take this part to, to get it out. And usually they have this dispenser to drop these things in. So uh, uh, one of the uh, reasons for that, is goes to my principles and you might might have played with another chevette or played with a straight razor played with something but one of the principles is lowest angle 
Okay, and what I believe with this is if you shave with this and you won't get an edge feel. Because the edge doesn't really touch. And that can sometimes lead you to, and you can see that it's 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 a pretty good removal of the fur. Uh, is it can lead you to have the tendency to want to press in, tip out, go against lowest angle, lightest touch. This, if it's a comfortable shaving, will continue to go along on that lowest angle, lightest touch. And I have suggested to people that maybe this would be something that they want to try. Um, uh, obviously, if you can buy one of these, they're a little more, more expensive. Uh, I think you can get them uh, uh, off of Amazon. I think I've seen them for about $120 where you order them if you, in the U.S. If you're in the order you in the U.S., if you order them on Amazon or whatever, or sometimes maybe eBay, not a used one, a brand new one, uh, from a vendor in Japan. Uh, it, and that's actually where I got mine because it's one of the hesitancies I had in getting one of those. The, the list price in some of the places that have them are uh, uh, around 200 plus dollars. So, and uh, they go up from there. Okay, so the other thing that's no longer available, okay, this is the Essence Razor by Tetalus. Okay, the one thing I really, really like, I mean, it's stylish, it's fancy, it's, you know, but the one thing that I like about this uh, the most is that is that the profile is thinner than any other uh, artist club format and it does allow you especially with that uh, professional super blade to get on the lowest angle lightest touch It was the passion of the guy who developed these, who designed it, to uh, design a razor that acted like it's straight, but didn't require. The maintenance. And and I was one of the earliest ones to get that one. There were 333 of these original ones made. I think you can go to Tetalus, look for the Essence Razor, that's what this is called, and you can get on a waiting list. Okay, I think he's going to make some more. I don't think he's going to make them just like this. There will be some sort of a change so that the 333 remain as originals. He had, for some reason, he had a, uh, a thing going with the number three. I don't totally understand I don't totally understand what that was all about, but that was uh, one of his things. So uh, this along the way, if you decide open blade shaving is is something that you want to do, but you decide you do not want to go the route of straights. Many people who go to straights love them. They love the honing. It's all part of it. Should you decide that 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 part of it is not for you. This is a great, great option. Great, great option in my mind for you. Um, um, there, It's still a costly thing. I mean, I can remember, you know, I did one of the earliest videos with uh, on the Essence Razor and I can remember comments, you know, you know, I mean, because it's like 300 bucks, okay? $300 for a Chevette, I won't pay that. And it's made in China, you know? And it's like, it's like, okay, well, uh, you're going to pay 200 and some. And if you buy the one with the wood scales, you'd be pushing two and a half. And then, you know, 
So you're going to be looking at it, but it is not the expense. You know, I mean, I've spent over $300 for a single uh, uh, regular straight edge razor. Now you could say, and I've looked at them at up to seven. <laughs> No one could say, oh, well, then you don't have to buy blades. And there's a billion arguments that anybody could make pro or con. Uh, my only purpose here today is to go on and say that this is another another kind of an option. Okay, so if you have progressed along and you have, you know, we're a couple of weeks since I did the first video and where I suggested that what people do is is to... to stay on the flat of their face. And somebody may want to jump from the snap blade, snap the e blade uh, uh, chevette and may like it enough to, to maybe want to go to this, okay? I know plenty of people that use the SS, the one with the little bump, okay? Uh, and I think I've read people who actually prefer that. It's less expensive. There's one in between now that Feather makes. It's called the SR. So that is another. Another option available. to people who are interested in looking and don't want to spend this kind of money. The profile is a little bit different uh, in between the essence. I, I, you know, my only reason to buy one would be to show the difference. So, uh, my hope that if you have progressed along with the experiment uh, with a Shavette, okay, that you've got some feel and you've got some level of comfort. These two tools are heavier. They're weightier. They're a little bit more like uh, like a straight more so I think this one because this is stainless steel this is not a uh, molded metal okay I'm two passes in and that's usually uh, at the end of two passes using either of those tools I uh, usually find when I have sharp steel, <laughs> I find that I'm, uh, a little bit, um, closer in how much I've shaved. And then the third pass is just something that really gives me that final, final closeness that I like.
and I'm going to do my final against the grain pass with this. Now, this one doesn't have a professional super. I think this just has the regular professional blade. And some of the things, the techniques around going around the jaw, going around the jaw is probably... One of the toughest things in, uh, I don't know if you saw what I do, a lot of times I'll go uh, kind of across and around, okay? My initial is always right on the corners to go uh, across rather than trying too much, uh, go around, although now I can. I'm a little bit better at it than when I started. And these things with practice, they come. And wherever you're at, uh, uh, I'd be pretty comfortable at this point if you have been, if you had started within the time from my first video to this, I would be uh, comfortable enough to say that you should be well enough along your way to have made the decision to progress or to drop it, okay? You may want to go a little bit longer. You may eventually drop it anyhow. I don't really know. But uh, if you're into it and you're, you are enjoying it, which is kind of nice to be able to develop uh, your particular shave pattern And then perfect the technique that you use to uh, progress through that. I've heard a number of people call this thing a replaceable. They don't like to call it a Chevette, okay, because of the connotation that it's a cheap something. Um, I would, Chevette is a is a uh, trade term for for the Dovo tool. Replaceable blade, straight razor is, all, is what they always are, a replaceable blade, open edge, shaving tool, whatever you want to call it. So that was a pretty good shave. Uh, I don't think is is if any of you looked at my cotton ball test, I don't think it's as would rank as high on the cotton ball as where I did that cleanup, uh, fourth pass cleanup. But it's it's certainly a uh, uh, a shave that I that I'm happy with. Um, For those of you that tune in for uh, my criticisms <laughs> and my smart remarks about the uh, 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 bludgeon and beatdown shave form, <laughs> here's a screenshot of uh, the Admiral uh, uh, with one of his normal beatdowns. You can look at that. And, and for the two weeks that they let me be on there before they before uh, the Admiral threw me out 
uh, started calling me names and then threw me out. Before he did that, uh, there was that guy that was, that he was criticizing. I saw how how all the contributor moderators that were active in there. They're all pummeling the shit out of this guy. Okay. The guy's uh, about 10 years my senior from what I recall seeing. And uh, uh, he wanted to, at this point in his life, he wanted to join, take up straight razor shaving. And there was a whole big bunch of stuff on there. And it's like they have never, you know, they pummel him. And then he brings it up. And then they get upset. Because... These people don't want others to know how poorly behaved they are. So, uh, Joe L. Badger, Joe L. Badger, uh, he appoints he appoints these guys uh, to be the policemen, the small town cops to go around and uh, and beat up his customers. I wonder where I, I wonder where I wonder where old old number fifty six is. Uh, about beating up customers uh, with with any criticisms of of the owner of the shave forum and 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 the particular moderators, but yeah, you know, I look in there once in a while. Uh, I've I've noticed that the numbers they used to have these numbers of people online at any one time of like ten thousand. It's like okay, so now that it's a thousand, I've noticed the numbers of of the members online is is it is consistent i don't know if it's a particular time of day i'm not sure i'm not sure what it is i really don't care okay i have friends that are members over there and some of those members uh that, that are members over there have friends members friends over there and that's all well and good okay uh but they know that they can't say anything. They cannot call out the admiral for uh, his his arrogant and poor behavior. Okay, and I don't know why uh, El Joe Badger uh, doesn't come after him because I've been critical of the ads and the pop ups, and and the admiral even posts his thread where he talks about how to avoid the ads. He says, we don't have anything to do with it. We see it. We're, here's the response you're going to get. And we're going to lock it down and all this kind of stuff. Don't tell me uh, that El Joe Badger can't do something about it. Okay. It's just going to mean less cutching. So it's all about the money over there. And uh, like it is most of the places. Uh, but uh, I... I, I have fun making of them, making fun of them a little bit, uh, and and if you are a active member over there, uh, I'm not criticizing you unless you are uh, one of the super moderators that like you know and contributors, you know, with all your badges and all that stuff that like to go around and beat down people uh, who are just asking questions and just want to help, want a little bit of help on uh, some of the things they want to do. So uh, that's the shave. Uh, that's the display of the uh, the Feather Artist Club DX, the Essence by Tetalus, uh, the uh, a couple of blades that I used today, or I think I used the Pro Guard. Okay. So and I did say I would tag in Martin on the Pro Guard because uh, at some point in his in his thing he may come off come across some of these he's a pretty good shaver and he has a lot of really neat stuff he's been using these i doubt he's gonna like a whole much like the pro guards a whole much bunch but martin if you do try the pro guards do stay on that lo lower angle because because with this blade okay with the pro guard blade if you if if you don't stay low you'll feel you'll feel the little ridges that are in there and it'll feel like a very, very rough shave, almost like it was a razor that hadn't been honed well or hadn't been stropped well or something like that. I've done it. I've talked to people that have done it. And and you just say, well, just drop the angle as low as you possibly can. And what you find out that you don't get the edge feel, but you do get the hair removal. And the other thing about uh, if somebody does choose to go this way. The other thing, in my opinion, and in my experience, 
is that even though these are more expensive per blade, okay, so so you buy these other ones and there's, you know, I guess they're like 20 blades to a pack, okay? These might even cost more per pack and there's only 15 of them, so they do cost a little bit more. But uh, in my experience, these, the Pro Guards, last twice as long as these. These die pretty quick, you know, they perform really, really, they're sprinters, they, they, you know, they run the 60 yard dash and in and, and, and the fastest times, but then they're done. They can't. They can't go the duration. So uh, that's that. This is Bill. Hoping everybody has a great weekend. Uh, for those of you here in the uh, good old USA over here in America, uh, pay your taxes and have fun. Bill out. Bye.